Okay, so in the last video, I, um, uh, I'm gonna go back to the article, but it, it said that the, that the lamb was born on in Israel's Independence Day, but the article came out April 20th of this year, so this is the, the date that we commonly know as their Independence Day, that they, that they were made a nation, but that's on the Gregorian calendar, of course, <clears throat> the Jews don't follow the Gregorian calendar, you know, they do in some respects, of course, but, um, for anything having to do with them as a nation and, and of course, feast days and things like that, they follow the Hebrew calendar. And, <clears throat> sorry, um, the, the date on the Hebrew calendar of May 14th, 1948 was actually the fifth day of ER, which is the second month on the Hebrew calendar. So that makes sense now because I was wondering why this year they celebrated their Independence Day on April 18th and 19th <clears throat> instead of May 14th. I was like, why are they doing it a month early? So now I understand why. And then next year is supposed to fall on the 8th, beginning on the evening of the 8th and the 9th. So I just wanted to cover that for any of you who do date calculations of things thought that might help. So let's go look at that article again. Okay, so they make a reference to, um, and the flocks conceived at the side of the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. So we just looked up um, in First Peter chapter 1 verse 19 about um, that Yeshua himself was a, a spotless lamb. <clears throat> And that we are to be spotless as well. And look what it refers to. Look at the cute little guy. Um, this is a specific breed of sheep that was taken out of Israel and then became pretty much non-existent as a breed. And then this, um, then she's trying to bring it back. I believe this is the... Um, <clears throat> First Lady Prime Minister Lewinsky told Breaking Israel News. So, this is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's wife. And, I don't know why they're saying Lewinsky, though. First Lady Prime Minister, that's Netanyahu, <clears throat> his wife. So, anyway, um, and I've seen her before, and that looks like her. I'm sure somebody knows. I don't know why, unless she kept her married name? I don't know. Anyway. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this this lady. Okay, this is this is not the, this is not the prime minister. This is not ben, Benjamin Netanyahu's wife. Her name is Lewinsky, and she just says uh, because it was a female lamb, they thought of the first lady prime minister. So then they named her Golda Meir. So okay, got it. Okay, I was confused, but she does resemble, but she's much younger, of course, than Netanyahu's wife. Anyway. Um, so she's, she brought this breed of sheep, uh, from Canada and she's now breeding them in, so cute, in Israel. And this breed, as you see, has a little bit of like brownish color here, but he has spots and there's a better picture. Jenna Lewinsky is her name. <clears throat> Um, it also goes on, uh, Genesis thirty thirty nine. the flocks conceived at the side of the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted, and these were the ones that, Jacob, when Jacob and, and, um, Laban, when he was breeding sheep so that he could have his own flock, so that when it came time to 
get out of town and leave Laban with, with Leah and Rachel and all their children, he wanted to have his own flock of cattle and sheep. And so he was breeding um, part of Laban's stock with the ones that Laban had given him and uh, leaving the ones that <laughs> weren't up to par for Laban and then he was taking the choice ones. And of course there's symbolic spiritual meaning behind that but if i'm if i'm remembering correctly that the spotted and the speckled and the streaked were the the ones that were not well yeah that makes sense they were not the choice stock of the flock so anyway so this little guy come on every time i go to these israeli websites they they're loaded with so many ads and stuff that it, it bogs down my computer. Come on. And it won't, it just like freezes up. Anyway, here we go. So this is a little baby lamb. I think that's the mother. <clears throat> okay, now I gotta go back up. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna pause until I get to the right spot. You bother. Okay, good grief. <laughs> okay, here's the lambs. So you see they have spots on them. And they also have brown on them. So there might be a reason why they weren't, um, you know, they weren't around anymore in Israel. I don't know, that's just speculation on my part. I mean, they're cute and all, but let me show you <clears throat> the... The main breed of sheep that is in Israel is not this one, which died out as far as being, you know, one of the major breeds. But let me show you. Okay, so this is the main breed. It's the Awasi, um, called fat tail type. And the reason I'm bringing up the sheep is because the, the little spotted sheep that I just showed they're born in the springtime and then this is an article <clears throat> about the Awasi sheep and apparently um, the principal lambing season of the Awasi ewes is in November in Iraq, but in Israel it's December through January. So, um, and not saying that the little spotted lambs have anything to do with, you know, uh, spiritually speaking, without spot or, or blemish. Um, I'm, I'm, the point I'm trying to make is the, the time frames that it's pointing to, the seasons. So, um, Apparently, uh, December through January in Israel is, uh, it's not too cold for lambs to be born. Um, which I find strange because, uh, because the rains have just started. So maybe there's fresh shoots. That's what it is. There's fresh shoots of grass growing up and then I don't know I just thought springtime because there's more grass to eat and all the pictures that I showed of the little lambs jumping around and the, the okay I gotta show it <laughs> okay I just had to show the little lambs in the springtime they're just as cute as they can be oh my goodness and that they love to jump <clears throat> if you type in Lambs jumping, good grief. They're like jumping all over the place. They're so cute. Anyway, um. <laughs> Look at them. Okay, back to the study already in progress. Okay, so the whole point I was trying to make with the lambs was as we saw, the little spotted ones were born in the springtime, but the Owasi lambs are born between. December through January. 
and we as the bride are supposed to be without spot or wrinkle. Is he trying to say that I want you to look at the time frame of me coming for you, not in the spring, because you're not one of those sheep that has spots, so don't look to the spring. <laughs> um, but look to December through January, because that's what we're looking at. Well, I'm going to show you the calendars in a second, but um, I don't know. That's just a, you know, a hypothesis. Um, you know, and it does make me wonder about the spring because the Song of Solomon, the Book of the Song of Solomon, it it's clearly depicting. Springtime when he comes for her, when King Solomon comes for his bride. So I don't know. Could he be over, you know, folding time on itself and um, putting what would be springtime at a different time? I don't know. Because every time I read that, I was like, that, that means we have to wait till spring when it comes and goes. So I don't know, guys. But anyway, the December January thing. Let's just we'll we'll just stay one step ahead instead of twenty steps ahead. <clears throat> so uh, in Exodus twelve, it talks about taking the lamb for the Passover sacrifice, and uh, the, your lamb shall be without blemish. But see, it doesn't say anything about spot here. It's the bride is without spot or blemish. I think it's, it also refers to Yeshua when it says that in different places. But it says you shall take from the sheep or from the goats. So, um, if anyone wants to do a, a, a deeper study to find out what the sheep and the goats and the us and the what I just spoke about with the spots and whatnot, go to... Genesis chapter 30 and read about um, Jacob and the sheep and the goats and how he, you know, um, bred them and to take, so I don't know if you want some, some deeper understanding into all this. So anyway, that's enough about the sheep for now. Um, let me show you the calendar. Okay, so if we're going ahead with the 30-day jump, um, then that would put True Kiss of One on December 9th, which was this past Sunday. And then True Hanukkah would begin on January 2nd, or the, the evening of January 1st. Which is interesting because of my vision that I had where I saw fireworks and he told me. <laughs> See, I'm going back to that now because, I don't know, it just... I didn't want to go to January 31st when we were looking at Hanukkah in, you know, earlier. Because I didn't want to go that far, but now it seems as if we are going that far, possibly. Possibly. So, um, yeah, the vision I saw, lots of fireworks and I heard in my spirit go back and look at it again he was speaking of Hanukkah so I you know the first thing that popped in my head was New Year's Eve so um so this is so I want to get, get to the glimpse and then I want to I'm running out of time again uh, so as we know that the two feasts, uh, Feast of Dedication and Feast of Tabernacles were back to back, and therefore, this is what it's going to look like, and then I'm going to continue from here and hopefully finish in the next video.